Welcome back to a bit gaming and a uh, quick update on the World War II progress. So, so I'm setting up a German force based on the, the crossfire uh, way of setting things up. So you've got um, a, base, a base represents a squad, so three squads is a platoon with a platoon leader. The um, I'm doing the platoon is on a circular base because I want um, want to be able to you know you can recognise what a thing is just from the base because at this scale and you know all the camouflage it's not that obvious. So I've got a circular base with two figures for the platoon commander and three bases of three for each platoon. I had that before. All I've really done with this is um, re rebase them. Well, not even rebase them really, just uh, reflock them so they look. They have a you know, similar sort of look. So that's your three platoons for your company. And then your anti-tank rifle and your uh, two-inch water. Because uh, the way crossfire works is roughly a scale of one to three. So like, you know, three guys represents like eight to ten. And, uh, and you know, each platoon would have their own two-inch mortar and anti-tank rifle, say. Then, uh, so it's three platoons means there's three. So that's, you know, one each, but it goes up to the next level, up to the company level. Probably going to change that because it's kind of gets in the way a little bit. Uh, these things, and what I'll probably do instead is have um, have uh, you know two inch wall with some uh, ammo markers off table, and then any time a platoon commander wants to, you know they, the platoon base can fire the two inch mortar, and every time they do it, there's a chance of um, you know if you roll four or six and it's okay, roll one to three and you lose one of the ammo markers, something like that. And similar with the anti-tank rifle, say so any section can fire an anti-tank rifle, but every time they do it, um, there's a chance of losing ammo, something like that. But anyway, so what what got done? Use the old uh, mixture, so spheres to figures for the company commanders. So you've got two figures each from the HQ, and a couple of figures from and a figure each from the uh, infantry pack. So these. So these three figures uh, are going to be the company commander bases. In the in Crossfire, the way it works is you you have one company commander and one kind of security section. But um, so I'm not actually doing this for the Crossfire rules exactly. I'm just using the kind of the scale idea. The thing I particularly like about the Crossfire is the um, is the combat. Um, you know, as a squad, if a squad fires or something, you throw three dice and. Uh, Five or six is a hit. Three hits uh, destroys. Two is suppression, and one is a pin. And it's the simplicity of that is just uh, I just really like. So I'm gonna gonna use that somehow. And then you know if they're in cover, you reduce the number of dice and heavy machine guns have fought. Blah blah blah. So it's very very simple, simple system. So, I'm, so it's based on crossfire rather than the crossfire itself. But yeah, so in crossfire you have one company command base and a security uh, section. Whereas I want a, a you know company commander and and second in command, generally so they can um, have some kind of you know chain of command thing where you have the you know one you know well one's got to be within like twelve inches of another and something like that and you can set up a whole um, a chain of command a literal chain of command. But anyway, whatever. So that was that. Then the um, the uh, thirty-seven mil anti-tank guns that I had already. Rebased them, and repainted them, because uh, it was all. They were all. I did it on gunmetal, so that they look nice. Blah, blah, blah. And the uh, the main things were painting up two bases for battalion mortars, and two bases for the battalion machine guns. Now, it may, it may change. Well, there's actually there's actually twelve. I said the scale is one to three, and there's actually twelve machine guns in the in the battalion. And I was always and in one of the, one of the um, earlier org charts for the Germans is they uh, do 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 missing about missing about yeah is they had uh, you know one machine gun per company or one machine gun section per company per infantry company. And then some some extra ones, so that's for you know, as a reserve. 
Um, and uh, and in that sense, so I was just thinking, you know, really like one. If you've got, if you're creating a company, you don't need like one or two bases for for the um, for the machine guns. But um, apparently, I was, there was a, a video I was watching from uh, Military History Visualized, who I assume everyone anyone watching this has heard of already, which uh, dis uh, which discusses their kind of battalion tactics when on an attack. And what they what what his uh, video was saying is um, that the general the general idea for a battalion attack, which you have one company uh, is the main attack, second company is a diversionary um, type attack, and the third company is reserved for the first, you know, to exploit any any success. But um, what he was saying was that, in, at least according to the, the doctrine. They they would have all the machine guns and more, all the battalion support weapons would be on the main attack. So in theory, you know, if if, a, if your company was on the main attack, you could have all, all twelve heavy machine guns supporting them. I don't know how you know likely that was in reality, um, or how often it worked that way, but apparently that was the doctrine. So I'm probably going to get a, basically the point about it, I'm, going to, I'm probably going to get another couple of those uh, heavy machine guns just to. Um, just in case, just for that thing. Uh, and the other, you know, my favourite little officer figure from the Sylvester kit, that makes it, it's making us a, f a fourth platoon leader. So I'll make a, a fourth platoon as a kind of support option. Do do do. And the, um, the other thing, or two things, is again, cause I'll try and make the, um, yeah, the, the base tells you what it is, and then the number of figures. So that's why you know the company command has got 50 mil base and three figures, and the platoon is on a 40 mil base with two figures, etc. And the other thing was, um, again, to, for the same reason, to make it um, obvious what things are. Um, having the forward observers as two figures on a 30 mil square base, uh, just so you, know, you can tell straight away what they are. And the, the last thing, which is that I'm, you know. I mean, I'm inclined. I've been watching all these videos, all these you know, different World War Two rules, and uh, and there's bits of all of them that I like. And in particular, I'm, I haven't got the O group rules yet, but um, watching the videos, this, the thing they have with their combat patrols, which are basically not actual combat units. They're just you know meant to represent you know some kind of movement, which could be you know it could be farm animals or it could be um, actual patrol. Um, and the idea being that you move these first. It, you know, the idea in, in those rules, O group and to a certain extent chain of command and, and other things like that as well, is that you know, you don't know where the enemy is and straight away. You've got to find them, and so you use these uh, patrol markers as as a kind of um, substitute. It's a bit like blinds, but you know more mobile. And yeah, so so these are going to be blinds basically, or the equivalent of blinds. We have a few more of them. Uh, is it, uh, the combat patrols, you move them, and then at some point they, they either get removed or you replace them with, a, with an actual unit. So I need some more of them. So I need another one of these. Cause this was actually going to be a forward observer, but so now I've got, I need two of these. So one, for the art, um, art, uh, one for the battalion mortars and one for um, artillery, divisional artillery. And uh, I probably want at least one of these per platoon. So need a couple more of those and one more of those uh what else is there oh yeah and oh make it up some of some of the trucks that i want eventually um so yes that's 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 the that's the progress on that i mean it's still in the same if i want to play um bolt action or you know chain of command or any of the one-to-one -one scale each of these um oops each of my uh, crossfire platoons has got one base with a machine gun, and so I've got, got some extra solo NPCs to be, um, no, not NPCs, <laughs> NCOs to be um, playing games like that. So that then, on that's on a you know, one to one scale, but that's that's just a separate thing. So, anyway, in terms of my what I need to complete the infantry version of this. So I want to, I've got a 75mm infantry gun, not painted yet. 
So I want a 150mm um, infantry gun as well. Because a lot of this is really easy. It's about having like one of everything because I just like, because I just like it basically. So I want a couple of heavy machine guns, a 150mm infantry gun, uh, one of those uh, towed um, flak guns, uh, 20 million, 20 millimeter I think. Loads more uh, vehicles to paint up. Um, and I think that's oh yeah, and and, and the fourth platoon for these for this guy. I've got some various spare figures I can use for that. So that's that, and that, and that this I could have as a you know, the spare platoon could be could be a scout platoon. So I get some um, motorbikes painted up for them. And the last thing I think for the inf for the infantry version is uh, have an engineer's platoon as well. Um, so just get a bunch of you know, similar to this. Maybe have four figures per base to make it obvious that it's uh, that they're different uh, engineers. <coughs> so, <coughs> so yeah, so an engineers platoon, engineers platoon, and uh, so that, that's that's basically it. I think for the infantry version, and then uh, a couple of stugs with the armoured support, early stugs. That's trouble. There's loads of stug stug models about, but. Um, they're nearly all with the long barrel, so I don't know if I get the long barrel ones. Just <laughs> just cut it off. And, uh, what would that do? Or was that, would that look really terrible? I don't know yet. So there's that. Uh, what else was there? Oh yeah, and then and then once once that's done, then just turn them into have a Panzer Grenadier version as well, where they with Hannah Mags and uh, and then you know do the early war tanks. You know, a couple of Panzer ones, a couple of Panzer twos. I've got the threes and fours really. Um, what else is there? Oh, there's, you know, the, yeah, the self-propelled versions of these things. You know, the self-propelled artillery, self-propelled anti-aircraft, and so those early Panzer Jaeger, Panzer Jaeger ones. So blah blah blah. It's all you know, ramble ramble. But yeah, so that's going on quite well. Quite fun. And uh, oh, lastly, it's, it's not really World War Two, obviously. But um, because in my original plan was to do these kind of small ancients armies, I bought a load of figures for that, um, which are now I've kind of changed my mind on all that now. I'm going to be doing uh, medieval and uh, yeah, so I, you know, I got a load of ancient and Napoleonic, so now I'm switching, I'm going to change to medieval and um, uh, you know, horse musket. But anyway, so I bought a load of ancient figures. Um, can you see that? I don't know if you can see that. With my little, not very well painted, but you know. So basically, when I you know run out of bases or whatever it is, I've run out of. I'll um, paint up some of these. So these are Cretan archers for the Macedonian army. Well, not just Macedonian, but that, they were originally for Macedonian army, and uh, and a chap. <laughs> I think that's an Egyptian one. But, you know, who can tell? But anyway, yeah, I think it's an Egyptian one. So I don't know. I was just doing it um, you know, for something to do when I got stuck on the um, World War Two stuff. But I mean, yeah, they're quite nice. I do like them. The the, um, the Vitrix figures. These archers are Vitrix, Vitrix plastics. And I forget, forget what it is. It's either unarmoured hoplites or peltasts. have got eight archers in them. I just used one of the um, unarmoured hoplites as a as an officer. Um, yeah, because I'm basing on threes for this guy you know, for these guys um for the archers anyway but yeah they're nice very nice figures i mean they're a bit big well so i want to say big big they're bigger than the warlord figures which can be a bit of an issue because i originally got the unarmored hot lights to go with um uh warlord armored hot lights i was going to have the back row being unarmored and the front row being armored but they're, they're much bigger so it doesn't work but they're very nice, you know. I do like the Vitrix figures. They're, they're a little bit bigger, which I say can be a problem depending on what you're doing. But they are very nice. The chariot, I think, is um, Warlord. Um, yeah, I didn't paint it that well. <laughs> well, I, I, I never paint the, the, the pictures I've seen online. They they make it much more colourful. Whereas that's a little bit on the dull side. But it's okay. It's done. Oh, the other thing about that is. Um, you know, the whole thing with the MGF bases and being able to pick stuff up from the base rather than picking up on the model. And so I was experimenting with the different 
uh, heights of the bases, MDF bases. And this is two mil, and you know it, two, that's, that can be fine on you know certain things because that are quite light, you know, easy to pick up. But I sound like a chariot, which is heavy. I think uh, a three mil MDF would have been better. So any further chariots I do, I'll put them on the three mil MDF, making it easier to pick up. But anyway, I think that's um, I think that's basically it. Yeah. So it's, the, the things I need to do now for this is um, so one more crossfire platoon slash you know so three bases, um, two more machine guns, 150 mil infantry gun, uh, engineering platoon, and the loads of transport to be painted up. But that's uh, that's oh and some slugs. Yes. I so say it's a real pain because I. I kind of um, stugs are my favourite thing basically. It's been so, from a kid, you know. They were, I don't know why they just were, but um, you know the early war ones. There are some early war ones, but they're a little bit more expensive than some of the other ones. That the um, that got the long long gun. So I'm debating whether to get a couple of the. Uh, I mean, it's not much. It's only a couple of quid each, so it's not actually a big deal. So I might just get the early, get those ones, or I might get the. Um, Armour fast ones and just cut the, cut the gun down. I don't know. I just I mean it's probably no not a problem doing that probably, but I'm, I haven't done anything like that for years, so I'm slightly nervous it's going to look crap. Then again, whatever you know, it's only a few quid. Shoot, mate. Anyway, blah blah blah. Ramble, ramble. Okey doke. To a little bit.